ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಾಧಾ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ರಾಧಾ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧಾ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರಧಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರಧಾರಿ ಯಶದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರಧಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರಧಾರಿ ಯಶದಾನಂದನ ಗಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶದಾನಂದನ ಗಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಗಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಗಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮ ತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹ 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे गोताय गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल गौरा हरि बोल जया जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय प्रभु पाद जया जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे ओम ज्ञान तिमीरांध से ज्ञानंजना शलाकया चक्षुर्मिल तस्मा श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये न भूतले स्वयं कदाम ददाती स्वापदा वंदेहा श्रीगुर श्रीयुता पदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्री सागर जाता सहगना रघुनाथन्विता तम सजीव साधता सवधूता परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका का राधा का नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभान सुत देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासदी गौरा भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे शिल प्रभु पाद की Hey Krishna. Hey Krishna. So, Iskon Delhi would like to gratefully welcome His Holiness Swam Bhagwan Keshav Swami Maharaj. Hey Krishna. Uh, just to give a brief introduction of Maharaj. Materially, Maharaj has uh, is a graduate from University of London in Information uh, Management. And 20 years back, Maharaj graduated from the university, but he is still managing the information. <laughs> he is is a very Uh, is a very renowned, I would say, author of around 10 books, especially on Gita. He has written various guide books on Gita, and he's been preaching in London and UK all across the country. You might have all seen Maharaj in the news. How many of you have seen Maharaj? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Rishi Shonak came and was paying obeisances to the Maharaj. So we now it's our great fortune to hear from Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you so Maharaj. much, Guru. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So very very happy to be here. Uh, I hope I hope English is okay. 
Uh, we are in Delhi, English is fine. First, I pay my obeisances to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. When Bhavananda Prabhu took Srila Prabhupada's astrology, he took his time. He was born and Bhavananda Prabhu went to another Dweep astrologer to find out what Srila Prabhupada's astrology was. Then he went, he spoke to the astrologer, he came back. He said, Srila Prabhupada, I went to the astrologer. Srila Prabhupada said, what did the astrologer say? Bhavananda Prabhu said, when he saw your chart, he said, this man has the power to build a house in which the whole world can live. And Prabhupada said, that's a fact. <laughs> yes, Prabhupada said, that is my mission, to build a house in which the whole world can live. So we're so fortunate, any city we go, Srila Prabhupada has created all these wonderful embassies of the spiritual world. And uh, we're very happy to be here in Delhi. We invite all of you to come to London. I don't know if all of you will fit in the temple room. <laughs> That's a different story. And Srila Prabhupada, uh, I had the fortune, well, I don't know fortune or misfortune. Prabhupada said, uh, London is hell. <laughs> so in one sense, it was a misfortune. My parents, my father is from... Uh, Ahmedabad, Gujarati chu. Any Gujaratis? I can give Gujarati class if you like. <laughs> and my mother is from East Africa and they came to London in the 70s. And then somehow I was born there in London in 1981. And I went to university, I uh, studied in London, I went to university. But of course, as all of us know, when you come in contact with the devotees, it's very, very dangerous. <laughs> dangerous business. So the devotees, uh, I was going to the temple from birth, but when I was about 15, 16, I started uh, asking the devotees questions. So my dad, he said, it's okay, but don't go too deep. Previously, my name was Sandeep. He said, it's good, but don't go too deep. A little bit is okay, not Mar too Marash, deep. Maharaj, just take five seconds. Jin bhaktaon ko angrezi samaj mein nahi aati, un sabki suvidha ke liye peechhe hindi bhaasha mein anwaad ho raha hai. Sagar Prabhu anwaad kar raha hai. Kripya is suvidha ka laab uta hai. Hare Krishna. So he said, don't go too deep. I said, don't worry, I'm a very balanced person. <laughs> Famous last words. And uh, somehow then, at 18, I went to university. I studied, I, I wanted to actually study philosophy. And my father, he said, no, no, what, what kind of job will you get with a philosophy degree? You should study management. You should manage people. Managers don't do any work, they just manage and they make lots of money. So I studied information management, and, but by the time I was 21, I concluded that maybe my path in life was different. The devotees, they had come to me in the beginning and they said, you don't have to change your life. You just, just add Krishna. I'm not asking you to change your life, just add Krishna. <laughs> then later on I re realized the devotees are agents of Vamandev. <laughs> <laughs> because Vamandev, Vamandev, he just came in. And he said, oh, I don't need how much, how much do I need? Just give me three steps of land. <laughs> and he, took over the whole show. <laughs> so, the devotees, they added so much Krishna to my life that there was no room for anything else. No. <laughs> so, uh, so, Srila Prabhupada, uh, we are so grateful. Our life is uh, somehow to repay Srila Prabhupada. 
And then I offer all my obeisances to <coughs> Srila Prabhupada's disciples and all Srila Prabhupada's senior followers here who for decades have uh, preached selflessly, tirelessly, given the best years of their life to establish ISKCON in such a beautiful way here. So I offer my, all my obeisances to all of them and I offer all my obeisances to all of you because uh, all of you are part of uh, Krishna's pastimes actually. Sometimes we think Krishna's pastimes are going on in the spiritual world and maybe one day I can join those pastimes. Actually Krishna's pastimes are going on even here, even now. Because Bhaktivinoda Thakur he says, Adhyapiha shei lila kaha gaura roi kona kona bhagyavan dekhi bhara poi Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are going on even today. Kona kona bhagyavan, but who is that fortunate person? Dekhi bhara poi, he will be able to see that Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are going on even here, even now. So you are all part of the Gora Leela. Srila Prabhupada said, ISKCON is the latest chapter of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, so you are all in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Someone, Prabhu, you were trying to get my attention? You wanted to ask some? I thought you were putting your hand up. No. No, it's okay? All right. <clears throat> so we're part of something amazing. You know, sometimes you're in the Hare Krishna movement and after some time it can become a little mechanical. But every day we have to actually join this movement again. And we have to realize it's a great fortune. One time Srila Prabhupada's disciples, some of them were going around Vrindavan and they went to one Goswami temple, one of the western body devotees. And he paid obeisances in front of the deities and the pujari came. And he looked at the Western body devotee and he said, uh, You continue making prayers, maybe in your next life you can take birth in a Brahmin family. So he came back. Prabhupada said, Where did you go? He said, I went around the Vrindavan temples, I was taking darshan. He said, Prabhupada, one pujari, he said to me that maybe if I continue praying, practicing, uh, in Krishna consciousness, maybe in my next life I can take birth in a Brahmin family. Prabhupada said, you go back to him and you tell him that if you become very fortunate in your next life, you'll take birth in the Krishna consciousness movement. That is a significant thing. You see, we're here in this ISKCON, in this movement, there's no greater fortune. How many lifetimes did it take to come to this point of being in contact with this movement, of being in contact with Srila Prabhupada? Brahmande, Brahmite, Kona Bhagyavan. How many lifetimes? So somehow or other, by great fortune, we have this opportunity. So today we're uh, discussing a little bit about uh, Narahari Sarkar Thakur, we're discussing about Srila Prabhupada, we're discussing about the marathon. Is it? Are we discussing about the marathon? Yes. yes. We're discussing uh, something that's very dear to Srila Prabhupada. And so, with your blessings and permission, I'll try to share some things. And uh, if we have time, I'll also share you uh, some things on the PowerPoint. Would you like to see? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in one very beautiful song he sings. Eka kiya mara nahi paaya bal harinam sankirtane. He says, Eka kiya mar, me by myself, nahi paaya bal. By myself I have no strength to chant the holy name of Krishna. Srila Prabhupada said, if you think you can practice Krishna consciousness yourself and perfect the process, you're mad, you're crazy. 
Only in the Sangha of the Vaishnavas, only in the company of the devotees can we actually perfect the process of Krishna consciousness. It's not always easy to be with the devotees, isn't it? Have you noticed? Most of the time it's okay. Sometimes it's a little difficult. One devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I just can't tolerate this devotee. Prabhupada said, you have to tolerate him just as I'm tolerating you. <laughs> so it's like that. It's so difficult to be together. It's so difficult to live together. One devotee in the manor, once he came to me and he said, Srila Prabhupada said, your love for me will be shown by how much you cooperate. So you should cooperate with me. <laughs> I said, okay, I don't know if that's exactly what. <laughs> but in Vaishnav Sangha, in the company of the devotees, everything becomes possible. Sadhu Sangha Krishna Nam E Mantra Chai Samsar Vinite Kona Vastu Nai in this world, apart from Sadhu Sangha and the holy name of Krishna, really there's nothing much else of value. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he comes to this world, he never comes alone. He comes with all of his devotees. And he shows the Harinam Sankirtan by doing it with all of his wonderful associates, the Gora Bhaktas. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he brings all of his associates with him to this world and they have wonderful pastimes together. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has so much appreciation for his devotees. He said that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is glorifying his devotees, pancha mukha. He says though he has five mouths, he has so many good things to say about them that five mouths aren't enough. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he glorifies all of his devotees. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looks at Vakreshvara Pandit. I remembered Vakreshvara Pandit today when I came in the temple room because Vakreshvara Pandit, when a kirtan began, he would begun, begin dancing and he wouldn't stop, sometimes for three days. So I see here in Delhi, you like to dance. That's very nice. Vakreshvara Pandit was dancing for three days, non-stop. And you know what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Vakreshvara Pandit? He said, Vakreshvara, you are just like one of my wings. And if I had one more devotee like you, I would be able to fly in the sky. So continue dancing. Maybe one day you'll fly. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw Vasudev Datta, Vasudev Datta said, I'm looking at all the suffering conditioned souls of the world. And I'm thinking, how will they be delivered? Mahaprabhu, I want to take all of their reactions on my head so that they can be delivered. Mahaprabhu was in tears hearing about Vasudev Datta's compassion. You know what Mahaprabhu said to Vasudev Datta? He said, Vasudev, you have purchased me by your compassion. You have purchased me by your, uh, your merciful heart. Vasu he said, declare to the world, Vasudev has purchased me, and if Vasudev wants, he can sell me in the marketplace. That's how he purchased Mahaprabhu, by a heart of compassion. Mahaprabhu looks at Ramananda Rai. He comes to Godavari. And you know what Mahaprabhu says to Ramananda Rai? Ami eka batul tumi dvitiya batul. Ata eva amai tamai hoyasamatul. Mahaprabhu looks at Ramananda Rai and he says, Ami eka batul, I am one madman. Tumi dvitiya batul, and you are a second madman. Atta eva amai tomai, between me and you, hoya samatul, there's no difference. We're on the same wavelength. One madman coming together with another madman means many mad, mad things happen. 
And that's what they did, Ramananda Samvad, for so many days they were relishing. So Mahaprabhu said, there's no difference, we're as mad in love of God as each other. So just see all of Mahaprabhu's devotees, each one of them is like a gem. One day we look at Vakreshwara Pandya and we say, maybe one day I'll that, have that kind of enthusiasm, but just keep dancing. Today is a 24-hour kirtan, try it. Dance for 24 hours. <laughs> we're looking at Vasudev Datta and we're thinking, when will I have that compassion? We're looking at Ramananda Rai and we're thinking, when will I be that absorbed? And then we're looking today at Narahari Sarkar Thakur, who was another great devotee. He appeared around the same time as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> And uh, Narahari Sarkar Thakur, in Krishna's Leela, he was Madhu Mati Saki. Madhu, you know what Madhu means, isn't it? Madhu, honey. So in Radha and Krishna's pastime, she was bringing the honey. It's amazing. In Radha and Krishna's pastimes, you can just have one simple service. Seemingly very simple service, but it's so satisfying to the heart. So in the spiritual world, Madhumati had come down into Gora Leela as Narahari Sarkar Thakur. He was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associate. He was the spiritual master of Lochandas Thakur. Narahari Sarkar Thakur, he was there with, Shila, uh, with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his pastimes. In the Gora Arti, we are singing, isn't it? Narahari Adikori Chamara Dhulaya. He was uh, fanning Mahaprabhu when the Mahaprakash Leela was going on. He was fanning Mahaprabhu. And he was doing that service with great joy. Narahari Sarkar Thakur is said that he was a wonderful Kirtaniya. His voice was like honey. One time I was on my phone. <coughs> And you know like when you write a word, then sometimes it does an auto-correct. So I wrote Hari Bowl, and it auto-corrected it to Honey Bowl. <laughs> I was like, wow, that was good actually, yeah. Hari Bowl, Honey Bowl. <laughs> so the holy name of Krishna, when he would chant it, it would be so sweet. Madhur Naam, Madhur Madhur. So sweet. You know, there was only one devotee who could sing Gora Kirtan, the praises of Lord Chaitanya. You know, we have many songs which praise Lord Chaitanya. So there was only one devotee who could sing those songs in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> because otherwise, if someone tried to glorify Mahaprabhu, what would Mahaprabhu do? He'd close his eyes. Vishnu, 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 why you glorify me? But there was only one devotee who when he'd begin to sing these songs of Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu would just listen. Because it was so sweet, it was so enchanting, it was so um, incredibly touching to Mahaprabhu's heart and that was Narahari Sarkar Thakur. One day Nityananda Prabhu came to Narahari and he said, where's the honey, where's the honey? Isn't it Nityananda he likes, Varuni. <clears throat> so then Narahari Sarkar, he did some magic. He just went to the pond, he filled up one bucket and immediately honey. And he brought that honey and then Nityananda had it and became intoxicated. So like this, so many pastimes, Narahari Sarkar Thakur, he wrote many books. And he gives us the indication of how we have to become absorbed in... Uh, the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the past times of Mahaprabhu. So we are reading about all these devotees and Srila Prabhupada, he was right there. Srila Prabhupada was the Sainapati Bhakta. So he was also part of Lord Chaitanya's own army. And Srila Prabhupada came to this world. And one of the most important things Srila Prabhupada wanted to do in this world was to distribute spiritual knowledge. You see, Srila Prabhupada wanted to give. One time Srila Prabhupada, he came to America and there was a press conference. 
and there was this Indian reporter. So Prabhupada was answering the questions and then this Indian reporter, he put his hand up and he said, Swamiji, why have you come to America? Of course, this reporter was Indian himself. So Prabhupada looked back at him and said, why have you come to America? <laughs> so he didn't know what to say. <clears throat> Prabhupada said, you have come to America to take. You've come to America to take money, to take position, to take power, to take comforts. You have come to America to take, but I've come to America to give. Okay. He said, no, no, I've come here for better opportunities. Prabhupada said, me too. But I've come for better opportunities to preach Krishna Consciousness. You see, so... Srila Prabhupada had no interest in going. Why would you go to the West? He was in Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada was in Radha Damodar temple. You know what he would hear in the night time? The peacocks, chants of Krishna, maybe Krishna's flute, Bhajans, cows, this is what Srila Prabhupada was hearing in Radha Damodar temple, not mobile phones. <laughs> and what was Srila Prabhupada hearing in the Bowery in New York in the middle of the night? Police sirens, crashing windows, people screaming. Prabhupada went from the center of the spiritual world to the center of the material world. Why would he go? For better opportunities to share Krishna consciousness. And one of the ways in which Srila Prabhupada wanted to share Krishna consciousness in the most profound way was by giving people knowledge, giving people books, giving people a different way to look at the world, a different vision of how they can live their lives. We can say perhaps that Srila Prabhupada's project to translate the Srimad Bhagavatam was perhaps his greatest project. Prabhupada had many projects. But I would propose to you today that out of all of Srila Prabhupada's projects, his project to translate and distribute Srimad Bhagavatam was the most important project. Why do I say that? Because it's the project that Srila Prabhupada was working on from day one till the final moment of his life. It's the project that Srila Prabhupada worked on every single day in the most valuable hours of the morning, in the morning time. It's the project that Srila Prabhupada requested devotees to always do from the very first day to the very final days he was giving instructions. It's the project which when Srila Prabhupada had printed the first few volumes of the Bhagavatam, only then did he feel that he's ready to go to America. So distributing Srila Prabhupada's books and the Bhagavatam is surely something very very pleasing to Srila Prabhupada so we are getting ready for the marathon uh, after COVID everything is open again and uh, many many devotees all over the world are going out and are going to connect people with this transcendental knowledge so today we're reading from Srila Prabhupada's Lilamrita uh, we're reading from volume number six. This is chapter number one. Please distribute books. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Okay, so I'll read a little bit, so please pay attention. <coughs> San Francisco, July 5th, 1970. Srila Prabhupada was attending the 1970 Rathiyatra in San Francisco. The day was cold and windy, and about 10,000 people had joined Lord Jagannath's procession through Golden Gate Park. Srila Prabhupada had danced in the street with thousands of participants during the parade, 
addressed a large crowd in an auditorium by the beach and looked on as his disciples had distributed a free vegetarian prasadam feast to thousands. But when a devotee arrived with half a dozen advanced copies of Volume 1 of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Śrīla Prabhupāda appeared especially pleased. Surrounded by devotees and curious festival goers, Śrīla Prabhupāda held one of the books, admiring the front cover with its full color picture of Radha and Krishna. The volume was big, almost seven and a half by ten and a half inches, and its dust jacket shone silver with the large bright red letters, Krishna. It was a transcendental wonder in Śrīla Prabhupāda's reverent hands. You've seen the original Krishna book, there are many copies still, you can see silver in one volume, Krishna it says on the front. When Śrīla Prabhupāda saw this, his heart was touched. When Śrīla Prabhupāda once came to Boston, Boston was the place where they had the ISKCON press. So Śrīla Prabhupāda, he gave a very quick lecture and then really he was very eager to go down and see the press where the books were being printed. So he went down and he saw the press and he was inspecting the machines where all the books were printed. And then Śrīla Prabhupāda said, keep the machines very, very clean. Maintain the machines. And then Prabhupada looked at all of the devotees and Prabhupada said, this is the heart of ISKCON. And then the devotees said, but Srila Prabhupada, you are the heart of ISKCON. Prabhupada said, yes, and this is my heart. So if Srila Prabhupada is the heart of ISKCON, then the printing and distribution of Śrīla Prabhupāda's books is Śrīla Prabhupāda's own heartbeat. And therefore Śrīla Prabhupāda said, whenever I hear the scores, whenever I hear how many books are going out, then I feel like a young boy again. I feel like I have life again. So this is the heartbeat of our movement. Onlookers could barely restrain themselves from pressing in against Śrīla Prabhupāda to peer over his shoulders. And they didn't restrain their exclamations when Śrīla Prabhupāda smiled and opened the volume. He examined the illustrations, the print, the paper and the binding. Very nice, he said. He fixed his attention on a page, reading. Then he looked up and announced, that this greatly valuable book, Krishna, had just arrived and that everyone should read it. Holding one book in his hand with the other copies stacked before him, he said that anyone who so desired could come forward and buy a copy. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada was so eager. It's not that, oh, now we have these books, we'll go away and we'll read it. And no, no, the books have come, immediately give them out. Isn't it? No time to lose. This is the heart. This is the heart of a devotee, always in a mood of giving. They say you earn a living by what you get, but you earn a life by what you give. If it's just about my spiritual life, if it's just about my Krishna consciousness, if it's just about my sadhana, if it's just about my comfortable spiritual life, me, 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 janasya moho, yamaham mameti, I, me and mine, there's no life. There's no life in selfishness. The real life is in selflessness. The real life is in giving. The real happiness is in sharing with others. And therefore, a devotee is addicted. Ashaktis tad gunakhyane. This is a symptom of an advanced devotee. They're addicted to glorifying and giving Krishna to others. So Srila Prabhupada was just such a giver. 
And it didn't matter what obstacles there were. You may say, I want to give, but I have so many obstacles in my life. I have problems. I first have to sort out my own problems, and then I can help other people. Srila Prabhupada had so many difficulties in his Grihastha life, isn't it? He had problems in his business. He had problems even with his wife who wanted to sell the Bhagavatam for tea biscuits. He had problems with children, with his family situation, but he was always preaching, he was always giving. You see, when you help someone else solve their problems, your problems automatically disappear. If you are focused on giving knowledge to others, then you will become wise automatically. You don't need any separate endeavor. And if you dedicate your life to awakening bhakti within others, then you know what will happen, right? Your own bhakti will blossom. Therefore, Krishna consciousness is the most wondrous thing. Kaviraj Goswami says, it's the most wondrous commodity, the only commodity in the world that is such that the more you give, your own stock increases. Yes, so, continue reading. 9.15, right? <coughs> People began clamoring, understand? They were fighting. Who will get the books? And hands with $10 bills thrust forward while voices cried out, begging for a copy. And Prabhupada promptly sold every book, not even keeping one for himself. For the devotee, Srila Prabhupada's selling of the Krishna book was the most spectacular event of the Rathiyatra festival. They poured over the purchased books in groups, discussing Krishna's pastimes and the effect they would have on the people of America. Krishna's pastimes are going to capture people's minds. Shall I tell you a story? Once I was traveling in West Africa, so I went to Nigeria. So I went to one city in Nigeria called Benin. Has anyone ever been there? Probably not. I don't know if I'd go back there again. <laughs> it's a heavy place, but, but it was nice. We went to a market. This is a true story, okay? So I went to this market in Africa. Basically, market in Africa means same as market in India. Complete chaos, right? So I, went to, I was walking, going through this market. Then I came to one market stall. I think I was looking for a lock. And then I was looking, and then you know what I saw in this person's market stall? He was selling this uh, Krishna DVDs. You know Little Krishna, the cartoon? So he was selling the Little Krishna DVDs. So I said, wow, he's selling Krishna's DVDs. So I thought he was a devotee. So I looked at him and I said, hurry ball. He said, hurry, what? <laughs> So I, I understood, he's not a devotee. So I said, uh, oh, so I said, what's this? He said, this, he's an African, Nigerian. He said, this is a cartoon. I said, really? Who's the cartoon about? He said, it's about Krishna. So I said, uh, so who's Krishna? He said, Krishna, he's a... Uh, you know, this amazing cartoon, this boy Krishna, he goes into the sky and then he pulls down this whirlwind life out of this uh, demoness. Then he catches onto the tails of the cows and then he runs through. He's giving me full Krishna Kata. <laughs> so, so, he's telling me all the pastimes. He knows. So I said, wow, this Krishna, he sounds interesting. He said, yeah, this Krishna... I said, who is Krishna? I said, who is Krishna? And you know what? He looked at me and he said, I don't know who Krishna is, but he's a bad man. <laughs> That's what he said. True story. And basically, 
you know what happened? He was on YouTube and he somehow just saw the Krishna DVD, you know, because it's on YouTube also. So he just saw the, the, on the YouTube, he thought, wow, this is amazing, people will love this. So he ripped it from the internet, he downloaded the video, and then he copied all the DVDs. <laughs> and then he's selling them. He has no idea who Krishna is. Just see. Krishna's pastimes, all attractive. That is Krishna. Krishir bhuvachaka shabdo nascha nivriti vachaka. What is this uh, syllable krish mean? It means to attract. Krishir vacha bhuvachaka shabdo. Brahmananda told how in 1967, Prabhupada had given away his advanced copy of teachings of Lord Chaitanya in his room at 26 Second Avenue in New York City. Just before that book had arrived, Srila Prabhupada had been sitting and talking with Satyavrat, a disciple who had previously stopped coming to the temple due to petty quarreling with his godbrothers. When the copy of teachings of Lord Chaitanya had arrived, Srila Prabhupada had lovingly inspected it and then had offered it to Satyavrat as a gift. Brahmananda had been astounded to see Srila Prabhupada give away his only copy of the book. Having helped publish the book, Brahmananda knew how painstakingly Prabhupada had written it and how he had anxiously waited one year for the book to finally see the print. Yet once it had arrived, he had immediately given it away and to a disciple, who was not even in good standing. Satyavrat had taken the book, thanked Srila Prabhupada and left, never to be seen again. Although Srila Prabhupada wanted his disciples to be as eager to distribute Krishna conscious literature as he was, none of them knew how to do it. Distributing a magazine and asking for a small donation was one thing, but a big hardbound book when the entire shipment of teachings of Lord Chaitanya had arrived in New York in April of 1967, the devotees had hired a truck, picked up the books at the dock, and unloaded them at 26 Second Avenue. They had then shipped them to ISKCON centers in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Boston, Montreal, and elsewhere. And there they remained. Some devotees had tried placing ads in magazines and leaving books in bookstores on consignment. <clears throat> but the books didn't sell. How to sell these big hardbound books remained a mystery until something significant happened, an accidental discovery. So the devotees had received these big books. Srila Prabhupada had printed them but the devotees had no idea how would they distribute these books, who would be interested, who would pay the money, uh, how would they approach people. Uh, it was the 60s, no one was really into religion. Uh, it was not a time when they were ready to follow rules and regulations. Uh, the mood of the 60s was sex, drugs and rock and roll. So who would be interested in reading about such things. So the devotees had no idea. But now, in the Srila Prabhupada Lilamre, we'll go on to uh, hear about how the devotees discovered a beautiful way in which Srila Prabhupada's books could be distributed. And uh, in that way, book distribution exploded. And what I want to say on this point is that Kaviraj Goswami says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kathanchana Shmrite Yasmin Duskaram Sukaram Bhavet Vishmite Viparitam Shyad Shri Chaitanyam Namamitam If you remember Lord Chaitanya, that thing which is very difficult becomes very, very easy. And if you forget Lord Chaitanya, even easy things will become very, very complex. So in the course of the marathon, maybe there will be many obstacles, maybe there will be many difficulties. You may think, how will I reach them? How will I be able to distribute books? 
Others are good, they're good talkers, they're charismatic, they're funny. I am not like that. How I will be able to do it? Uh, others can be a good book distributor, but maybe it's not a service that I can do. But here you'll see in the Prabhupada Leelamre, that because the devotees had a desire, then Krishna made all arrangements. You know, one time Shivaram Maharaj, he was distributing books in Hungary and it was so cold. It was like, no, not, not Hungary, Canada. It was so cold, it was like minus 15. Here in India, you think it's cold now. <laughs> Prabhuji, very cold. We come from London, we come in a t-shirt, no problem. <laughs> because this... He was in Canada, so cold. Basically, they had gloves on and he couldn't even take his gloves off to accept money. Because if you take your gloves off in the cold, finish. Your hand will fall off. He couldn't take his hand out of the um, glove. Practically, he couldn't even move his mouth because it was so frozen. But he said, somehow or other, we have to distribute books. So you know what he decided to do one day? He decided, let me try to distribute a book without saying one word. So he was standing on the street and he was just meditating. As someone would walk down, he would meditate. Paramatma in their heart, please inspire this person. And he would just look at them. And then if their eyes would meet his eyes, then he would just look at them. He couldn't speak, couldn't... And then gradually he said, people began coming over. And then all he would do is he would look in their eyes, he would pray in his mind, he would go like this, he would tap on the book. And then he would tap on the person's heart, like this, tap. And he said this. And then, and then, <laughs> some money. <laughs> and then he would just tap. And then they would understand, oh, he's asking for a donation. Okay, I give. He said he was going in the day, distributing books without even saying one word. So if someone says, I don't know, I'm not a good speaker. Don't worry, don't say anything. <laughs> There's no limitation. So Srila Prabhupada's uh, Sankirtan movement is incredible. Um, would you like to see something from London? Okay. So, uh, just to share with you some of our memories of distributing books in London um, and the UK. I have to share with you that I feel my most magical, uh, my most magical, my most memorable, my most mystical, my most moving experiences in life have been while trying to share Krishna consciousness with others. You see, when you go out to try to share Krishna consciousness, Krishna is right there with you. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Nachatasman Manusheshu Kashkin Me Priyakritama Bhavita Nachame Tasmad Anya Priyataro Bhuvi. Krishna says, uh, one who tries to share this knowledge with others, there is no person in this world more dear to me than that person. So we have all have the opportunity. So when we try to go out of our way to meet people and introduce them to Krishna, you will begin to experience Krishna uh, very closely in your life. Srila Prabhupada said to one book distributor, one day you will distribute a book and you will turn around and Lord Chaitanya will be right there to embrace you. Okay. 
Vrindavan Das Thakur says, Ajanu Lambita Bujo Kanakavadato. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has very long hands. If you ever meet a person when they stand up and they put their hands down and their hands meet their knees, you can try when you go home. Probably it won't meet. <laughs> Ajanu lambita bujoka nakava dato. Mahaprabhu's hands were reaching down to his knees. And it's significant because Mahaprabhu wants to embrace the whole world and he'll embrace you. But you have to go, you have to be part. Kona kona bhagyavan deki bara po. You have to be fortunate to be part of the Sankirtan movement. So we were very fortunate over the. You can see? Okay, so this is, we, over the years, over the um, years, we were able to travel all around the UK, distributing books, meeting people, traveling in a van. Uh, many, many amazing stories, many, many amazing experiences. People that you think would never be into Krishna consciousness. People that you think, these people will never take books. These people are too far away from Krishna. Uh, these people all, uh, all become interested. Because one devotee once said to me, when you are distributing books, you can never lose because it's three against one. I said, what do you mean? He said, you want to give them the book. Your Paramatma wants to give them the book. Their Paramatma wants them to take the book. The only problem is they don't want to take the book. <laughs> he said, but don't worry, there's three. It's three against one. So you'll always win. You won't, you'll never lose. So he said, just go out. Srila Prabhupada said, just go out. There are people who are waiting to meet a Sankirtan devotee. You, you, see, the thing is, we go out, we think, I, now I have to find someone. Where will I find someone who's interested? You don't have to find anyone. They're already there. All you have to do is go out. What did Krishna say to Arjun? Tasmatram utishto yashalavashva nimita matram bhavasav yasachin. Krishna said, I've already killed everyone on the battlefield, just be an instrument. You see, when I joined the temple, <clears throat> then all the devotees were preaching to me, become a brahmachari, become a brahmachari. You know, they, they gang up on you, you know. <laughs> see, some of these boys have uh, experience. So I had some ego. I thought, yeah, yeah, they really want me, you know. They, they've seen some talent in me. And then our temple president, he came. Now he passed away, Shruti Dharma Prabhu, many of you may know. And he came to me and he said, sit down. And then he said something to me, which was so humbling, but which excited me to no end at the same time. And you know what he said to me? He looked at me and he said, Lord Chaitanya's movement is going to spread everywhere whether you join or you don't join. But then he looked at me and he said, but it's going to be an adventure. Do you want to be part of the adventure? I said, yes, yeah, sign me up, you know. I want to be in the adventure. So, see, the thing is, whether we're here or not, it's all going to go on. It's all a foregone conclusion. It's going to happen. But the question is, do you want to be in the Chaitanya Charitamrita? Do you want to be part of the pastimes? Do you want to say, uh, experience Krishna? Uh, they say, don't fill your life with things. Fill your life with many stories to tell. Yeah? You want to fill your life with things? Or you want to fill your life with experiences? And you know the best experiences, the best stories, the most mystical things, they happen when you go out and you share Krishna with others. So fill your life 
with stories, with experiences. So I'll show you a little bit of the street, what it's like in the cities of the UK, so you can get a bit of a sound is there? So these are just some of the okay. you get a little bit of a taste of uh, what it's like on the streets of the UK and uh, as every book distributor has many many stories so maybe I can share a couple of stories with you last year I was out I was distributing books around the UK and then uh, in one city called Leeds I stopped one man from Africa, so I stopped him. He was very, very serious, incredibly serious. He was big as well. So you know when you're distributing books, the first thing you have to do is you have to connect with someone. You have to establish some connection. So I was trying to establish some connection with him, trying to build some relationships. I said, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you ever thought about God? He said, I don't believe in God. I said, yeah, no, no, no problem, no problem. I said, yeah, yeah. But you know, sometimes, you, have you heard of karma? He goes, I don't know what karma is. I said, no, no, no problem. I said, where are you from? He said, Ghana. I said, oh, I said, Ghana. I said, I went to Nigeria recently. He said, I hate Nigerians. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Everything I'm trying to do to connect to this person is not working. And then, and then, I looked at him and I saw something. And I'm going to show you his picture and see if you can find something interesting when you look at him. I didn't notice it, I was speaking to him, but then I noticed something about him. And see if you can notice what it is. Can you notice what it is? Can you see here? Here's a Nishinga Kavach. So, so I looked at his, I looked at his cover chart. I said, what's this? He said, what? I said, what's this around your neck? He goes, I don't know what this is. <laughs> so then what I did is I went like this. I said, look. He said, you, you got this, you're my brother, you're my brother. <laughs> so I showed him my cover. So, so he was wearing this cover. So now I thought, now we have a relationship, something in common. <laughs> so I said, you don't know what this is? He said, no, I don't know what this is. So I said, where did you get this from? He said, I was traveling in Africa and I went to some market and I found this. I said, so why are you wearing it? Why are you wearing it if you don't know what it is? And you know what he said? He said, I don't know what it is. When I wear this, and I put it around my neck, I don't feel any fear. <laughs> so then I gave him full 7th canto Bhagavatam Katha. 
give the fatwa. No idea. No idea. Didn't even know who Krishna is. Forget, I mean, Nishinga Dev too far. Doesn't even know who Krishna is. Wearing a Nishinga Kavaj. And then finally he took books. So, uh, these things are going on. I'll show you one other story. One day we were traveling on Sankirtan. So you know what it's like in the Sankirtan bus. Everyone goes to sleep, isn't it? Devotees, once they sit down in one place, generally they go to sleep. I've even seen devotees go to sleep while they're standing up. <laughs> I've seen. Anyway, all the devotees fell asleep in the Sankirtan van. Luckily the driver didn't fall asleep. And we reached the spot. So we were in the car park and then we walked onto the street. And when, when we came out onto the street, there were six of us. We looked at the driver and we said, where have you brought us? You brought us to the wrong place. So he brought us to some small, small town. There were six devotees, too small. So I said to the devotees, okay, quick, everyone get back into the car. We need to drive to the next town. We don't want to waste time. And then the driver, you know what he said? No, no, it must be Krishna's arrangement we came here. <laughs> so I said, yeah, you would say that. He said, no, no, it must be Krishna's arrangement we came here. Let's at least stop one person and see what happens. So literally, we all turned around and the first person walking down, we stopped him. So we stopped this one person and the devotee, he put a chant and be happy in his hand. And he said, chant and be happy. He looked at it and he said, I already done it. I just finished my 16 rounds at the beach. <laughs> so, just some guy. So we said, you just finished your 16 rounds at the beach? He said, uh, I, we looked at him, we said, what temple are you connected with? He said, I've never been to any temple. We said, which devotees do you know? He said, I never met any of you guys in my life. So we said, how do you know about this chanting? He said, I got this book, the one you just put in my hand. I got it already. I got it 10 days ago. And I started reading it. And after reading it, I gave up drinking, I gave up smoking. In the back of the book, it said you had to chant on beads. But I didn't have any beads. So I made beads. And then the Swami, he says, you have to chant 16 rounds. So I'm chanting. So, so you want to see a video? We took a video of him. <coughs> So this is the man. So this is James, we met him today. Um, we actually, he was the first person we met on the street. And he had quite an amazing story. So, uh, James, you tell us a bit about how you got the chant and be happy? Um, my friend brought it back from Ireland, because you know, I was into higher levels of consciousness and things. And it sat on my shelf for a good six months. And then 10 days ago, I, I sat and decided to read it. And since then, I've stopped drinking, um, I've stopped smoking, I've stopped eating meat, and it, it just really touched me. I feel like I really understood it. And have you ever been to any Hare Krishna temples? Never. I've obviously spent a lot of time in Christian churches and things, but never really felt felt something was missing, not quite. It wasn't explanatory, and it's just, uh, when I started chanting, I mean, the, there's something about the, the makes you think, well, I'll try it, and if it's wrong, it's wrong, but it works, it, it works yeah. So that's very interesting, you've never been to a temple? Never. You've never um, met any Hare Krishna devotees? Never. Um, but you've, you've read the book, and you've got your own beads? I've made my own beads, George Lovins can. Yeah, oh, you've made your own beads? I've made my own beads, yeah, from, okay. from what it said there, I've made my 108 beads. I can't remember where every now and chant as much as I can. That's amazing and, story. Yeah. Uh, and it stopped me from drinking and smoking in 10 days, yeah. which is... So we actually great. were in Paynton and we met James, the uh, first person on the street, obviously Krishna's arrangement. And um, we called him over, so he's with us now in about an hour. We're going to...
who are hurrying on through the streets. Have you ever chanted through the streets? No, no. It's first time, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we'll be doing some chanting through the streets. And it just shows the amazing power of Srila Prabhupada's books that, um, that can change someone's life almost instantaneously. Definitely. Do you agree with that? 100%, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you read in the book that you need to chant and uh, obviously you didn't know any Hare Krishna devotees or you never visited any temple so you made your beads. Yeah, I made my own beads. Um, 108 beads with a uh, Krishna bead at the bottom to turn around and chant again. And that was just that was just all from uh, reading the book? You yeah. never met anyone? No. Nope. The second day, that was it. I went and bought my beads and threaded them up. Cool. Amazing. <laughs> See? Nice, huh? Blue Krishna bead. You saw it? <laughs> That's good, huh? This is amazing. When you give someone a book, you don't just give them paper and ink. You give them the opportunity of a whole new life. So, it's such a beautiful thing, it's such a beautiful opportunity. Srila Prabhupada is so kind to all of us. He made the effort. Srila Prabhupada took such an effort to come here to give us Krishna consciousness. And so, <clears throat> to in some way try to show our gratitude to Srila Prabhupada by sharing this with others. Um, this is the perfection of our life. So I'll just end with one final thing from Srila Prabhupada. Um, yeah, very beautiful Srila Prabhupada. Sorry. Srila Prabhupada is saying. So, it was the desire of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur that Europeans and Americans should come here and chant Hare Krishna Mantra that profession is now being prepared. And that is my satisfaction. I try my little way to fulfill the desires of the Prabhupada. At my old age of 70 years, I just was a gambler and simply thought that this was the desire of course. I do not have Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Bhushan Prabhupada. He also asked me to do this. Anyway, at least there is a place now where these Europeans and Americans may come and be peacefully chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra and advance in spiritual understanding. And I am very much thankful to you, to the American European boys and girls, who are helping me in this mission. So, um, God cooperating uh, in this way, and I am sure this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will be successful. Uh, it must be successful because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted it to be done. Simply, we the workers, the servitors, must be very sincere. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will give us more and more facilities so that we can work very well. So keep this mission always in view and do your best. That is my question. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, uh, I take the dust from your feet, pray for your blessings. Thank you for um, listening patiently and being part of this amazing movement. We all inspire each other. Uh, so I feel very fortunate to be with you today. And, uh,
be able to share something with you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Srila Swami Bhagavan Kesha Swami Maharaj. It's been a great privilege to hear from you and also see you in action, apart from hearing you in action. Sabka Hriday se anurodh hai ki abhaar prakat kare Maharaj ji ka Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Kaun sa divas hai aaj? So Sang Day, today is Sang Day, not Sunday. And on Sang Day we got the Sang of His Holiness Swayam Bhagavan Kesha Swami Maharaj. Swayam Bhagavan Kesha Swami Maharaj is Baat Ke Sabbuta, is a living proof that the Krishna Consciousness Movement is a family business. It started with Srila Prabhupada, Srila Jayadaya Swami Maharaj, Srila Kadam Kanan Swami Maharaj and Srila Swayam Bhagavan Kesha Swami Maharaj. Probably the first uh, continuous generation of sannyasis in ISKCON. It's the first, I guess. So it's a great privilege. And uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, I have a complaint that Maharaj is here only for one day. So next time you probably have to plan a longer trip. And uh, devotees will be eager to hear from you. Sunenge nahi sunenge? So they are eager to hear from you. And aaj Ravivar hai, Maharaj ne itna inspire kya. Aap sabke li vishay suchna hai ki hamara Sankirtan department khula hai aaj. Bas aapka dil kholna chahiye. Baki loong ka batwa bhi khul jayega. So, please go in huge numbers to the Sankirtan department. Take Bhagavad Gita from huge numbers. And don't come back with the books, but come back with the Lakshmi to be deposited back. Bahut bahut dhanyavad aap sab ka, aap sab ne aad bhaag liya. Aad dupair ka pravachan nege, His Grace, Nrsimhananda Piru. Yoh ki Srila Prabhupada ke preshishya hai. Aaj aapne unke mukharam in se Guru Puja Shravan kiya da, Guru Puja Kirtan. आज के कार्यक्रम में भाग लेते रहिए आज एकादशी महामहोत्सव है तो 24 घंटे का कीर्तन होगा कृपया उसमें भी आप भाग ले सकते हैं और जरूर भगवान का दर्शन लें भक्तों का संग करें और बहुत जल्दी निकल के बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करें शीला प्रभु भाग गई शीला प्रभु ट्रांसेंडेंटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मार्गदान की निदाई निदाई गौर सीतारात प्रेम आनंदे इस सेल ना स्वयं भगवान के शशमावी महाराज की लगत गुरुशिले बेबाद की थैंक यू वेरी मच हरे कृष्णा